Variety is the name of the game in today's lesson. We're gonna be talking about forehands. It's one thing to have a great forehand, but if you only have one weapon to choose from in your arsenal, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Hi guys, I'm Kirby Bridges and I'm a pro here at EssentialTennis.com where it's our mission to provide passionate instruction for passionate players just like you. Our recent VIP student, Phil, came to work with us here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin from Los Angeles. He wants to feel more comfortable hitting both low balls and high balls on his forehand side so that he can develop his forehand as even more of a weapon than it already is. Make sure that you watch the entire video because in the end, I'm gonna be telling you where you can get our free action plan to use the very next time that you're on court. For now, let's get into the lesson. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is drop a ball from like, from like here. And so it's only going to come up a couple of inches. And so this is really going to challenge, and we've, we've put the net like eight feet in front of you. So the, nice up. yep, the only way, well, there's two ways to make this. Uh, you could, you could make it by like opening the racket and, and pushing it over. But I'm going to challenge you. My challenge to you is to uh, use probably 50% acceleration. And so uh, what we're looking to do is create a lot of lift and rotation to get it A, over the net, and B, have a curve back into the court. Make sense? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. So when I had you earlier today uh, mirror me here, this is like 100% of the acceleration should be focused in that plane of uh, movement. Does that make sense? All right, play with the angle. Face has to close a bit. There we go, almost. Yeah, nice. Cool, huh? So this is extreme. Like I'm, I'm only giving you a ball like here and you're right in front of the net and this is still makeable. Uh, a ball that's knee height from the service line really is no problem as long as you have this, this motion correct. Awesome, awesome. All right, now let's really play with it. I want you to aim for the side T. Okay. All right. Whoa. You can change your stance if you want. You don't have to stay uh, closed. There we go. I'd like you to start uh, in the middle of the baseline, please. I'm gonna try to leave the ball low and short. And so you're gonna have to yeah, you're going to have to hustle to get up to the ball. It's, it's probably, my goal is to get it so it's still down around knee height. And I want to just see you use this motion, uh, but now within the context of a little more realistic movement. Does that make sense? Now remember, the ball is now coming towards you. You are also coming towards the ball. Exactly. So that, that really exaggerated one that you cut too thin, is probably going to end up being about the right feel now that there's a collision happening between you and the ball. Does that make sense? Uh, no particular target right now. Let's just try to keep it inside the, the baseline. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Right idea. Okay, good curve, good curve. Nice shape, Phil. That's it. There we go. Good, good, good. Nice job. And so uh, now that you have the rotation, uh, you're used to having to play it really close to the net to keep it in play. Right, so now because you have the rotation, you have the ability, you could, you could have hit that ball three feet over the net and still had it been in play easily. So go ahead, go ahead and hit it up. Of course, if you've got people at the net, maybe that's not the right play, but you're mostly a singles player, so we actually want depth. We want height, we want depth. Yeah, dude, that's in by like eight feet. You could probably still hit that two feet over the net and still be fine. Uh-huh. That's still in by three feet. Really nice. Yeah, good. Nice job. And so if the ball sits up a little higher, that affords you a little more luxury to be able to hit through it a little bit more to give it a little bit more pace. Uh, really, the height that you're making contact dictates how, uh, what the ratio is of forward to, to upward. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, grab a quick drink. And then we'll, I want to spend a little time on high, high forehands. All right, so uh, Phil, Kirby's going to feed you a ball that, 
Kirby's going to feed you a ball that lands somewhere in here with some good height to it so that it comes back up again. You are going to stand your ground. And rather than you scuttle all over the baseline, you're going to stay put. And Kirby's going to be the variable. She's going to play with the height of her feed. So that ideally, her target is to give you a ball that you make contact with a little bit above shoulder height. All right? And um, your goal, uh, besides just staying put, let Kirby be the one who kind of uh, finds the right spot. You're going to stay put, and your goal is to make contact up above shoulder height with the tip of the racket above your hand at least once or twice. Like I'd love to see contact, the racket coming up, rotating, and for sure level, but I'd, I'd like to see a couple with the, the racket head actually a little above your hand. Good. Now go ahead and accelerate at it. At least 50%. Yeah, good, good, good. Here, check it out. There's one you just hit. Yeah, I think I know the difference now. Oh, look. Yeah. So what I tried, used to try to do was use uh -huh. my shoulder yeah. to swing up like this up to the ball. To kind of like lift ball. it. Yeah, instead of using my wrist to come around the ball. What every good tennis shot needs, and when I say tennis shot, I'm not volleys, not like finesse shots, mm -hmm. but like uh, drive shots, like big swing shots, mm -hmm. you, we need racket head speed. Yeah. And so if all that's moving is your, your shoulder and your whole arm is moving in, in uniform, there's no, there's no generation of, of racket head speed there. Yeah. What we need to do is load here, create that lag that we were working on earlier, and if, if it's really um, high, you don't, you don't need to do this because yeah. the ball's already up here. Right, all we need to do is give it forward uh, momentum with a little bit of topspin and we're, okay. we're all set. You're a good enough athlete. I, I height should be no problem for you. Like you should be able to take a full swing at that confidently and curve it and drive it strongly gotcha. the way that you just did it. Just stay put. Nice job, nice job. Yeah, good, good, good. Nice job. Load it up and then let it release. Uh-huh. So um, from up here, it may be, it, it's tempting to think that from up here we could start to turn over and actually close the racket face and hit it down. It's got to go around like this. Yeah, when you think about it, it just standing from here, it, um, if you look over the net, how much of the court can you see? Like none. None of it, right. Yeah. Um, you, you'd have to get up like probably up to about here to see any of the court. And so contact from here, we still need some, some like lift. You. you could, if you drive it really strongly straight forwards, it'll work. Like <laughs> yeah, most shots we need a little bit of shape to it, a little bit of lift. Good, nice job. Here's your, here's the last three. This one's really up high. Almost kind of like a hybrid, like ground stroke yeah, serve so kind yeah. of, yeah. Second to last one. My idea is that it has to go around. So I can't lock my racket there in that situation, otherwise it's uh, over. No, you're, you're done, man. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of strength. Yeah. You know, once the, once the uh, arm gets up above the shoulder, there's not a lot of strength. So you've got to build racket head speed uh, with good mechanics. And snap around it. Exactly, yep. Yeah. All right, Kirby, can you please uh, mix up some like normal, you know, waist high balls and then uh, every three or four feeds, just throw in a shoulder high one, please. And uh, I want you to hold your, hold your spot on the depth wise on the baseline, Phil. Good curve. Uh huh, uh huh, good, good. Good, nice job, nice job. Nice, nice. Way to handle that, Phil. Nice job. Way to let the racket swing. Good. Last set. Phil left Milwaukee with a much greater understanding for how to hit outside of his strike zone and with a greater margin of error. But the thing you have to realize is that this is not the end for Phil's development. It's only the beginning. We sent him home with a detailed, personalized action plan that he can follow in order to cement the habits that we practiced during our time on court together. And now I want to invite you to do the exact same thing. I want you to have the same opportunity as Phil through this action plan. 
While we won't be on court with you the very next time that you practice, I can give you the next best thing, a step-by-step -step guide that will take you through exactly how you should be practicing to get the most out of the next time you're on court. Just make sure that you go to forehandactionplan.com or click the link in the description down below. While you're at it, after you get your action plan, come back to this video and drop us a comment to let us know how you're improving. Give us a like if you liked this video and please make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a single lesson from us. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.